Okay, now that we've got him out of all six boxes, one piece at a time, let's take a better look at the Build-A-Figure from Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Atuma. First, all of the pieces that that went to making Atuma were in these six figures. Three of them, let's see if I can clear that out. Three of them, of course, Namor, Nakia, and Okoye are from the movie. Hatut Zaraz and Black Panther are the comic book versions. And Everett Ross is a legacy collection figure. The only reason that the number six is especially highlighted was that I cut this out from the Everett Ross box. So let's take a closer look at the Build-A-Figure Atuma. First, it's got so much new sculpting that I think that was the deal. Marvel said, listen, we're going to repaint a couple figures because we are going to sculpt the crap out of this figure. There's so much detail, there's so much stuff on this figure. It's incredible. It's just, you know, there's a lot to it. Just, you know, even with the pieces, you can't really appreciate, like, oh, this is an arm. And then you put it all together and you go, my God, man, I don't know. I don't think any of this is reuse. Maybe maybe some of the chest and the muscles and maybe parts of the legs and things, but just a ridiculous amount of super cool stuff on this figure. So let's go over it. Let's start with the head, which is this really intricate headpiece. A lot of a lot of places you can see directly through it, and the, the spiky feathers, and of course his hair coming down, and then right over this this piece with the there's got to be vibranium, but also um, just great details, very very um, like he's very important. He's got the shoulder pads, which could have used a little bit of paint wash, but I'm not complaining, man. You got so much stuff. Let's, let me take the weapons out, out of his hands. First, let me go over the, um, this, the axe, or have they had a halberd? Something like that. But it looks like it, it just has this really nice texture. Like the thing was kind of raw vibranium. Like it's like unprocessed, except it's sharpened on the uh, end. And it has this sort of um, serrated edge, like this, this cutting edge. And then there's this real sort of like serrated like I don't know what you would use it for but that would be nasty to get hit with but he's also got the the teeth here a lot of nice detailing on the on the uh on the staff and then at the end it has these two little little things which I think would probably really hurt if you got hit with them and this I can't remember if this was the thing that was used to summon Namor or uh if this is a weapon in itself there's no um um, doesn't look like it's the thing they blow into because it doesn't have anything on this edge. There's a sort of a handle, like a rope handle that hangs down here, which is the only way that I knew to hold it that way. And of course, in the, in the image on the figure, he's holding it upright like that too. So I don't remember it as the weapon he used, um, in the movie, but it's nasty looking and it, it probably was. It's a lot of great detail in the in the weapon a lot of great great stuff in there that you know if you dry brush a little bit you can bring so much of that out so let's start with the head so the head doesn't have a whole lot of movement because he's got hair going down the back um as far as down goes um yeah, he's got a a large amount of down and that's great the hair head turns kind of all the way around if you wanted to get the hair up over the shoulder, but I don't know why you would. Oh, I think there's like a, a big hinge on the back of the neck. Let me see if the head sort of kind of slides back. It's got to slide back. It's got to... Oh, man, now he's got a lot of up. Yeah, the head has a ridiculous amount of movement. The head has a lot of movement. So let's see. Uh, tilt, head tilt. Yeah, he can be uh, a little more expressive in there. The the headpiece is more solid than some of the uh, weapons we've been getting lately. The let's see, the neck piece is something that you could probably, I don't know, it feels like it's glued on in places. I don't know if you can get that off by just taking the head off, but 
You know what? You can't because the torso came separate from the head. And that it didn't move. So, yeah. Let's check the wingspan on this thing. Um, you're not going to get a lot of... Of course, I tore the arm right off. Because uh, I put it together. Not because I'm super strong. Let's see if I can convince it to go back on without doing a lot of extraneous um, stuff to it. But the arms go out. I'm going to say right about there because I don't want to rip it off again. So the, the wingspan would be about to there. Uh, bicep swivel on both arms. Nice. Double elbows on both arms. And that's nice. Also, he's got a hinge in the hands. Uh, let's see. Because I see the hinge right there. There we go. So let me get that to where it can be seen. There it is. That way, um, there's there's this bone ridge here. So you're not going to get a lot of up flex in the wrist. But wrists go all the way around. No alternate hands for a Tuma. Probably don't need them. Um, there is a mid-torso uh, joint right under the rib cage. So you get a lot of up and a fair amount of down. And he he swivels. At the joint under the rib cage, he doesn't have a waist swivel. The belt is solidly put on. Like, it doesn't slide or anything. And, of course, this came with the torso also. It wasn't part of the the figure. So, um, in order to kind of get the legs on and all that stuff, it was one one solid piece. Actually, that's probably not true because the, the piece that you get with the torso is everything down to the, to the brown, where the brown... And the blue join, the blue is, is the leg that you got. And the brown is part of the torso. But it's also part of the upper leg. So the point where you put it on is the thigh swivel. So this part is glued on. It's really intricate piece. It's really nice. It's got a lot of great detail. Of course, with the legs, you get the, the uh, dumbbell joint. Or the, yeah, dumbbell joints. And the thigh swivel, get to the double knees. You've got double, oh, he kicks his own butt. Ow. It's not a Tuma. Okay. I had to get one in. One in. I'm allowed to get one in. Okay, so uh, swiv hinge on the feet. He's got rockers. Yes, he's got rockers on the feet. Very cool. He's got, he's a weird, he's all new sculpting, but because of all, all of the stuff on him, he's, he's a little hard to balance. So if you're trying to pose him out, you know, it might be, you know, you're getting frustrated. Just stick with it. He's, it's an unusual character, has an unusual center of balance. And it could mean that one of your legs isn't all the way in, like mine wasn't. So uh, keep at it. Oops, there it goes. So... That is the build a figure of Tuma. I like it. I wish we'd also gotten Nomura, but you know, I'm hoping we get Nomura pretty soon in the future, or maybe before the next movie. So until then, man, enjoy your toys.